Hey, what's up guys, Rip here. So today we're gonna look at two general topics. The first being games journalists reaping what they have sowed. And the second topic being a look at the game developers convention taking place in California, where woke attendees have put their hatred of gamers on full display with their cult-like behavior. Now let's start with the journalists. Now full scale, journalists have been suffering over the past couple of years because who would have thought people would stop supporting the slop articles that they've been shoving out nonstop? But in particular, games journalists have been catching a lot of L's recently. And here we have an official report that the Kotaku editor-in-chief has resigned over a new editorial edict. Now, what was this all about? To sum it up very simply, basically a Kotaku contributor was asked to write articles about games instead of political things, and that was too much for them, and they resigned. Let's look at this announcement here. So, Jen Glennon, who took over as editor-in-chief of Kotaku in October, resigned Thursday. In a resignation letter seen by Aftermath, Glennon says that she made this choice due to the management team's recent decision to deprioritize news in favor of game guides. After careful consideration, I have concluded that the current management structure and decision-making process at G O Media are not aligned with my values and goals for Kotaku. Yes, just like I mentioned, basically Kotaku contributors were asked by management to make more game guides instead of divisive political articles, and this editor-in-chief immediately resigned. How pathetic is that? Moving forward, according to a source close to the situation, Kotaku staff will be expected to create 50 guides a week at the site. Currently, Kotaku's homepage features prominent game tips and guides module at the top of the page in a space that was previously reserved for major stories and breaking news. Now, looking at some of the reaction, you see some of the original members of the Gamergate 2014 situation, like Nathan Grayson, if you know who he is, you know all of his crazy ties to the Gamergate participants. He is crying on Twitter like many other games journalists and their supporters, saying G slash O Media is effectively forcing Kotaku to pivot away from news and demanding that its staff of seven writers churn out an impossible number of guides per week, not what writers signed up for and not why people visit Kotaku in the first place. Stupid and cruel. Now, of course, people don't feel sorry for anyone at Kotaku, especially given their attitude towards their own work and also the attitude of gamers in general. You reap what you sow. Nobody feels sorry for them. And of course, you read the replies to that previous tweet and people are just dunking on them saying people visit Kotaku. Guides and reviews are literally what started the gaming journos. They weren't even doing news. They were just writing rage bait and propaganda. And of course, that's a pretty good summation of what's going on here. Now, you have other quotes saying this. The only thing that's stupid and cruel is Kotaku and its staff. Maybe you're being forced to churn out guides because it'll be next to impossible for you to insert your politics into those. And honestly, knowing the people at Kotaku, I, I think they'll find a way, unfortunately. But moving on, the article says, in quotes, I firmly believe that the decision to invert Kotaku's editorial strategy to deprioritize news in favor of guides is fundamentally misguided given the current infrastructure of the site, Glennon wrote. This decision, directly contradicted by months of traffic data and shows an astonishing disregard for the livelihoods of the remaining writers and editors who work here. And of course, she would make her announcement on Twitter saying, some personal news, I've resigned from Kotaku and Jim Spanfeller is a herb. I, I've seen a lot of people from Kotaku using that phrase. I don't know what they mean and I don't care to understand what they mean. But that was her resignation announcement on Twitter. Now, how do you think this was received? Of course, people just mocking her relentlessly. And she would hide all of these replies like this one. And this one down here saying, well, maybe the site will actually talk about games and games news instead of political junk. Why would you hide this reply? It's basically showing how insecure you are about a comment like this, and you're pretty much proving them right. But other people from Kotaku would come to the defense of Jen Glennon. You have Carolyn here, who is a Kotaku contributor that we've talked about before, saying, Extremely proud of Jen for taking this ethical stance in response to profoundly misguided anti-journalism edicts 
from G slash O Media Management. Ah, yes. Very brave move, she says, as she continues working with Kotaku as Jen Glennon resigns. Ah, she made a stance. Why don't you make a stance too? Or is your job more important than your ethics? Ah, I don't know. But of course, Carolyn has supported a lot of Kotaku employees, both former and present, including Alyssa here, who wrote the hit piece on this whole situation involving the ongoing Gamergate situation, where, of course, Carolyn would support Alyssa's comments that stated that you can't be racist to white people. And, of course, turning to Alyssa, you know that she had something to say about this situation. Of course, locking her account immediately after tweeting this right here, saying, The fact that leadership wanted to aggressively pivot what Kotaku does in the midst of a harassment campaign levied against me and the site for an original piece of reporting that was the second most read story for over a week is telling. Now, I'm going to actually make a, a little bit of a, uh, I guess, a, a leap here. But the fact that this article she wrote wasn't even the top read story over the last week is insane. This is the biggest story of your career. There are millions of people watching your account as this drama has unfolded and you've made yourself one of the main players of it and you still couldn't even get the most read story of the week. That's not a very good sign. I would imagine the, the, the most read one was probably something to do with actual gaming news and something that wasn't divisive and attacking the potential readers. But she goes on and says, oh, it drove industry-wide conversation and is still driving it. But what about how to get coins in Super Mario 64, where all these complaints can be summed up by this reply saying, rev up those guides. Going forward, we have another uh, video game reporter here. This one from, of course, uh, a former Kotaku, but now with The Verge. She had this to say before priving her account, much like Alyssa. It ain't great for sure, but it's there. It's now a function of finding the people you like and supporting them in their endeavors, irrespective of where they publish. So basically what they're saying is, I have an issue with Kotaku, an, an ethical disagreement with Kotaku in general, but I'm still going to support people there because I like them. They will do anything to preserve their little friendship club in this space of the gaming industry. They will completely flip up their morals as long as it protects their own interests and agenda. It's on full display here. And of course, this Ash Parish person was the one responsible for this recent Verge article about Gamergate, where of course, just like everyone else, she fails to mention the harassment campaign launched by a Sweet Baby Inc. employee that started this entire thing. But she was also the one who tried to say being a part of the uh, Steam curation group Sweet Baby Inc. detected is basically going to lead people to radicalize themselves if they stay there long enough. Yet, she can support people in Kotaku that she thinks has a very bad management system that is hurting journalists. Interesting. Anyway, so here's another Kotaku contributor running defense for the company and the other employees saying this. You know what? F it. Here's a small cup of tea. Management doesn't even care about the quality of the guides. They want us to aggregate them from other sites like a literal content mill that they're destroying people's livelihoods gags me. Not in the good way. They got a lot of weirdos working at Kotaku, don't they? Why would you feel the need to say this? This is very strange. You can't even make a serious post about the potential loss of your job and the crumbling down of your company without making a weird sexual comment. Like, are you taking this seriously at all? And this idea too right here of just openly crapping on your management in a public tweet like, how do these people not get punished at their job for speaking ill of their own management like this? It's kind of crazy. But moving forward, we would see this tweet from Carolyn, who was getting increasingly frustrated as people criticized her for defending and supporting the editor-in-chief who just resigned from Kotaku. She made this tweet stating, Maybe just me, but I really think news publications should be owned by people who value journalism. Oh, the projection is off the charts. Yes, this past week has really shown us who values journalism. And guess what? It's not Kotaku contributors who have been extremely biased and really just incompetent in their coverage of this ongoing Gamergate situation. And yeah, it's really rich to hear about valuing journalism from a Kotaku contributor like this. 
But moving on from journalists, we're now going to game developers because the Game Developers Conference is coming to a close today. It's been a four-day event. And where else but San Francisco, California? Because that's exactly where you would expect a bunch of woke developers to congregate together to cry about gamers. Now you can see there's tons of different talks and seminars throughout this entire event. And as this user points out, there are about 55 talks on diversity and gender in this GDC 2024. Inclusive design, gender gap, Afrofuturism, Afro fantasy, LGBTQAS plus debate, cancellations, and control of toxic communities. Yeah, only 15% of the conference is focused or 15% of this conference is focused on these sorts of things. And let's see some of these very brave uh, conferences that they're having. Oh boy, Marxism is great for a designer. Ah, literal communist sympathizers on full display. Who would have, who would have guessed the woke developers would support Marxism? And there's other weird lessons here, but what about this one? End white gender able-bodied man as the default. Great. I'm sure gamers will really appreciate this weird, hyper-focused, specific complaint you have. Here's another one pointed out here. Cancel Pigs are also running a class tomorrow at GDC where you can learn to apologize better after they are done canceling you. Of course, it's run by Feminist Frequency, one of the main players of Gamergate going all the way back to 2014. And you can see, so you've been canceled. Now what? Basically, this is set up for people who are getting canceled, right? Who have caused damage and have been called problematic and abandoned by their colleagues and friends. How can you fix this? Well, this intended audience is for anyone who has hurt others and wants to prevent it from happening again. Anyone worried about unintentionally harming others, anyone who has faced a call out and wants to make things right, or anyone who is interested in supporting people they care about who have done harmful things. I wonder if they're going to bring some of the uh, the people from Kotaku and Sweet Baby Inc. who have made disparaging remarks about other people based on the color of their skin. I wonder if they're going to get included in this uh, intended audience. Uh, unfortunately, I think because it's ran by the feminist frequency, I don't think they're going to consider what they did wrong, even though they've been called out rightfully by literally thousands of people. But moving forward, this is the cherry on top. This is what I've been hyping up this entire video. This is the clip that a lot of people are making fun of right now. So I'll read the tweet. It says, Developers vented their frustration at the game industry's layoffs in a long scream at GDC 2024. GD Scream is a collective moment of catharsis. So it goes beyond even the, the reasons listed here, as we'll see in a moment. They are venting out their frustration not only at the current status of their field, but also at gamers who are criticizing them. Let's listen to this clip. It is absolutely hilarious. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what a cult looks like, okay? You have a bunch of people literally going together in a band like this, screaming out at the injustices that they're facing as game developers. Meanwhile, they are some of the most privileged people you'll ever see. You are literally standing in California complaining about how hard you have it as a game developer at a conference that is quite lavish, to say the least. But when you read some of the reasons behind this group's screams, some of the document ones, as we see here, it gets even nuttier. So let's read this. Today, over 50 game developers met in a park across the street from the Moscone Center where the annual Game Developers Conference was taking place. They had one objective, to scream as loud as possible. The event known as GD Scream took place in an open area in the middle of the Yerba Buena Gardens where event organizers assembled the crowd holding up pieces of paper with scream scribbled on them. One of the organizers wore a shirt printed with Munchies the Scream. Another participant wore a t-shirt printed with an ice cream cone. At exactly noon, the cluster of individuals from all corners of game development 
let loose a loud scream that lasted for several seconds. As it trailed off, the group broke into relieved laughter and applause before slowly dispersing. Yes, like I said, there is something very, very wrong with these people and it's reflected in their work to begin with. But this is the current status quo. These are the people calling you losers, incels, racist, bigots, and alike because you dare question some of the woke agenda that they're injecting in your games. Meanwhile, they have to have a group scream together to let out all their frustrations of their very difficult life they have as a game developer because people would dare question some of the products that they're a part of. But overall, that's going to do it for this video. Some more prime content coming out of this ongoing Gamergate situation. And I'm glad you guys could share this moment with me and, and take a, a good laugh at some of these people reaping what they have sowed and having their crazy behavior put on full display for the public to see. But that's going to do it for this video. As always, feel free to share your thoughts about today's topics in the comments section down below. And I'll see you guys next time.